Tank. I'm Jay Valentine. And this is the R&B Money Podcast. Yes, the is. authority yeah. on all things R&B. See, y'all thought we was old. <laughs> huh? Y'all thought that we wasn't tapped in with the youth. You understand what I'm saying? Relax, young, aunt. Huh? Relax, aunt. <laughs> oh, you know what? <laughs> <laughs> aunt. It's still tapped in with the youth movement. The undercurrent is moving this thing. Our bright future is in the building. We're yeah. talking about talent off the charts, beauty off the charts. She's got everything happening, and we're going to get it to her. I sound youthful because I am youthful because youth is in the building. Give it up to Justine Sky in the building. Come on, y'all. Hi. Yeah. So yeah. How you doing? I'm good. I feel great. I've just been in such a chill place. I know when I came in here, you're like, you came in here all chill, but that's how I am. Life is just good, and I feel happy. I don't get too excited. Mm -hmm. I don't get sad so much anymore. I'm just chilling. Just, just found a good balance. Things are yeah. Yeah, I'm. I'm really great. You, as you can see, I'm. I'm always happy. Yeah. I'm always. Happy. <laughs> always. <laughs> always. And we're happy to have you here. Thank you. Thank I'm you happy for, to be here. Yeah. yeah. Thank you for you know taking the time to you know because i know you're moving and grooving no last time i saw you you know you was you was in paris just you know <laughs> just you know just just doing your thing living you know, my best life week, wearing your fashion you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. being the life of the party we were at a at a party mm -hmm. we were at uh, kanye's party yeah out there and yeah uh, we were just it kinda, was interesting yeah yeah, yeah. interesting is mm -hmm. a great word it was definitely interesting it, it was a great word yeah, <laughs> yeah. i wasn't there. but you know me i was in and out so <laughs> Yeah, I was I was there, you know, my uh, my, my kids were singing the choir and mm -hmm. um part of the show and and then there was a rave. Then there was a rave. The and DJs I'm a, were quite fire. I'm a though. raver, but not that rave. Yeah, the DJs were fire though. <laughs> no, the DJ was cool. They had like cuz they had like I guess like But I you know what? I wasn't I didn't even stay long enough to like actually experience what the mm -hmm. DJs were doing to be quite honest i just like i was also exhausted because i was out there for a while too so i was just like i just came to peep the scene yeah you were just in paris for a minute just relaxing because i don't get to spend much time out there i feel like because I'm, I'm always working and i have things here to do like in the states so i don't get to go to europe a lot mm -hmm. maybe like once a year mm -hmm. maybe so especially since like covid and all of that so sure. it was really nice to be out there and just experience all the restaurants and mm -hmm. see some friends that I haven't seen in a while and how, cool. how, how many times have you been to Paris three three times mm -hmm. and what do you how do you feel because I know as as an R&B singer you know what I mean like mm -hmm. going out there and 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 especially in that overseas market like they're like there's a different kind of love oh yeah and for appreciation sure. for what we do over there and I, I didn't go in my younger years I think in Europe honestly in a lot of places I just did like a couple back-to-back -back interviews yesterday with some Asian markets and, and outlets out there. And, like, I think because there's so many different um, genres of music here, like, in the States and artists, like, so many more artists here. I, I don't know. Maybe I'm, like, speaking just prematurely. But um, there's just such a different level of appreciation for music overseas. Mm -hmm. I feel like here in the States, we're just used to it. We expect Spoiled. it. We get over yeah. it quickly. Mm -hmm. And... Um, I mean, we created it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, like in 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 Europe, like in London, in, in Paris, like when they get us, mm -hmm. they're like, "Please don't leave," or like, and they just like are more focused on. I don't know what it is, but like even in London too, like just mm -hmm. when I'm when I have worked in London with producers and songwriters out there, it's just like a different level of like focus that they have. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, we uh, what was my guy. Uh, what was you talking about? Was it Dave? Dave Russell wasn't Dave Russell from England engineer yeah, yeah. underdogs uh -huh. Uh -huh. but just uh he's, he's his guy and then is Richard Furch from London Tyrese's yes. guy yeah I don't know if he's from London but he's from Europe he's from sure. he's from, yeah. he's from UK yeah. like uh -huh. for sure but like even just That's those a different, two, appreciation. Like, different appreciation mm -hmm. a different, different appreciation different approach sure. to like how they sonically make things feel I mean low-key they're kind of killing it when it comes to like the music and then even the even, acting even the too. acting no they're on fire I'm like yeah. dude I'm wondering when they're gonna let it uh black american play an english a character. black englishman mm. gotta nail that when accent. is that gonna happen you do gotta have to nail, nail that, accent. that accent i'm not well, gonna I'm not lie an actor, as so. americans we are saying. spoiled 
Yeah. We're very spoiled. Because, like, here's the thing, right? So we don't, as the, <clears throat> as the spoiled speaks, right? As the spoiled speaks, we don't necessarily take that big of an interest in other, other cultures. Yeah. Culture. You know what I'm saying? Because but I think we're, times yeah. are changing. Yeah, we're in a, we're in a yeah. sense. We've always, in a sense, been at the forefront. We've yeah. been the leaders of it. Right. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? In in terms of culture and swag and all of these things and entertainment for that matter. Mm-hmm. So you know you what I'm saying? You don't think Denzel could have been James Bond? I mean, I think Denzel is 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 also Jesus. So you asking the wrong. I mean, I'm biased. <laughs> yeah, you know no, what I'm saying. Denzel is the goat. <laughs> Denzel can do whatever he wants. So why Denzel? If Denzel get a shot at James Bond, maybe did he want? Did he? Maybe he want to. Maybe I don't he know. Hey, Denzel, to. did you want to be James Bond? <laughs> I, I saw him the other night. You know what I'm saying? So oh, flex, flex. Well, you niggas was already talking about Paris. Now you talking about yeah. No, no, no. I mean, I didn't. I saw this is a full champagne. with Denzel Washington. No, I wasn't with him. Okay, let me correct that. I mean, I hung out with him before. Shout out to Jamie Foxx. You know what I'm saying? I was in the right room, and um, he was over there sitting on the floor. And then I was sitting right here, two rows back from the floor. And then he saw me, and then I said, I hit him with that. He said, he gave me that. I said, What, what is that? That I means see I see you, you young fella. Black people yeah. saw you don't yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. He said, I see you, young fella. Nah, black people saw what's up, my nigga. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just a head nod. It's just it like, was far away. This is okay, don't, you're in the don't building. Don't try to diminish. Don't try to take She's away. She's trying to tell me it was black people talk. My <laughs> Denzel. <laughs> <laughs> don't try to take my Denzel moment away from me. He yeah. saw me. You got he it. seen me. You got he it. knew me. Denzel for Jesus. You know what's so crazy? I had a moment like that with Beyonce in Paris. Wow. It was so crazy um, because I was with I was with my friend and she was like, let's go say hi to Beyonce because she had like a renaissance club renaissance in Paris. And I was like freaking out, obviously. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And so I'm just like, you know, what? let me just like I'm not going to be invading the space. Like I'm just going to I'm so happy to be in this room. Mm-hmm. And so my friend's like, let's go say hi to B. And I'm like, I just I don't I don't think she like knows who I am. Like I just I don't feel comfortable just walking up to her like, mm-hmm. hey, what's yeah, up? Yeah. And as soon as I said that, she like walked towards me and said, hey. And I was like, <laughs> I, literally go, I go, oh my God, this is such a crazy party. <laughs> like, whoa. Right? It's crazy. It's her party. I'm like, it's crazy. <laughs> and she's like, hey. And I was like, okay, bye. <laughs> I just didn't know what the hell to say. I was like, "That is fun. It's such a crazy party, right?" And then I was just lit the rest of the night. They literally have a video on my phone of me screaming in the street. Someone said something to me. I was like, "Don't make me call Beyonce." <laughs> don't make me call Beyonce. Did y'all switch numbers? That's uh, my did y'all switch? No. no. Like I don't even think Beyonce has a phone. Like you know, you know I don't think Beyonce has a phone. Like you can't contact hey, her. Man. You have to call someone else. <laughs> You can't call me. I hope Beyonce has a phone. I think it's like I think she does. It's like (laughs) it's like even Beyonce, even people on that level, you you'd be surprised how human and regular and cool they are. But I'm but I'm like even when I saw Denzel, like I've 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 seen him before, but I doubt it I doubted if he remembered me. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But it was still like, you know, he was the one guy that I was kinda like like a little nervous about. So you don't think Denzel heard sex, love and pain? I hope so. You know what I'm saying? I I hope so. You know, I hope that's what that head not was. I heard you. I like your tunes. I, I like your tunes. I, li- I like your tunes. You know what I'm saying? But it's like you never know. But it's like there's just like a respect thing mm-hmm. too. Like I think it's awesome when there's people that you know we either put on like such a high pedestal or we like admire like in their craft and to have that sort of like recognition mm-hmm, mm-hmm. as artists as well too it just mm-hmm. gives us that you know like yeah. pat on the shoulder to be like i see you and like you yeah. are like yeah I, like, yeah i get here. it yeah. i get it i treat everybody the same i just i i don't know any other way no no i get that no but i'm not saying, saying to treat people no, no, but I'm it's saying just in like in reverse right yeah in reverse it's, it's just it's, awesome it's like, to have that kind yeah. of like it's not not cosign but just that like you, you you doing your thing. I see you doing your thing. Yeah, like I, you I'm up here doing my yeah. thing, but yeah. I see you no, that, that's that acknowledgement. doing your thing. Yeah, I, I think you know, just in in meeting people of you know of all classes, I think especially people who have become very famous, mm-hmm. they need normalcy. Yeah, mm-hmm. one thousand. You know what I mean? And I right. think that it's watching watching people freak out sometimes, kind of like for them, it's like damn, like yeah, like I, I just, just kind of wanted to be cool. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So, you know, shit, I'm, I remember my first time, when I first came, I moved to LA and I'm 18, I meet my idol, Babyface. Mm-hmm. I'm like, what's up, nigga? Mm-hmm. <laughs> and Damon Thomas was like, 
you can't do that. <laughs> and Face was like, what's up, man? Nice yeah. to meet you. I'm like, yeah. hey, man. Just, Everybody's cool. It's baby but face, you, dog. But, but, but he's also kind of skewed. You know what Why? I'm saying? Because, you know, this this guy was hanging out with Michael Jackson at nine. <laughs> no, but that's so not even, that's not what I was saying. I was just saying, a, like, a as, good, like, oh, for me, <laughs> for me, like, working with Timbaland or him, like, acknowledging mm-hmm. that he, um, sorry. You good. Just stop calling me. Mm. Um, <laughs> just him being, like, acknowledging me as an artist yeah. yes. just gave yes. me that reassurance mm-hmm. that, like, because, you know, as as artists and just humans, we can, like, go through periods of, like, doubt or, like, am I doing the right thing? Mm-hmm, like, mm-hmm. I, like, especially me, I, like, I've been doing this for, like, a minute now. And, like, it's awesome that I'm experiencing f- what, for me, is, like, my first real moment where so many people are, like, discovering my music because mm-hmm. of a platform like TikTok. Yeah. Yeah. You yeah. know? Yeah. No, no, it's been rediscovery for you. Yeah. Rediscovery. Yeah. The yeah. song came out almost 10 years ago now. And it's, like people are listening to it like it's a brand new song which for me is just like wow like good music is timeless it doesn't yeah. matter if it came out in 2014 or yeah. or whatever mm-hmm. and so i'm just i already was in that space before my song collide started to gain this recognition on on tiktok but it just gave me that extra like pat on the back and sometimes mm-hmm. you need that in life yeah um because i'm sure like people didn't even like know that but i was like going through a space of like is this the right thing that i should be doing mm-hmm. like should i be doing music should i like think about something else mm-hmm. like and um i talked myself off that ledge mm-hmm. <laughs> and i was mm-hmm. like getting back into that space before this happened but it really just like reassured me this year started off like so amazing and i've just been like just grateful for like everything that's been happening I so let's know. let's get into that let's get into Let's get into the beginning, as, as Tank would like to say, yeah. where it all started. Where it all started. Because, like, I mean, I, I know you from being yeah. a very small, small kid, kid. Because, yeah. I, because of your mom. You know yeah. what I mean? Your mom mm-hmm. is my homie. Been my homie for a long time. Mm-hmm. Amazing attorney. Mm-hmm. Executive. All the cool shit. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Shout out to Nova. I think we locked her out because we want her daughter to feel comfortable. <laughs> her own moment. <laughs> and have her moment over here. Like, ah! it's, it's not your mom's friend. Doing the episode, okay? Mm-hmm. All right? <laughs> but let, let's start. Let's start from the beginning with you. Like, where this all kicked off? Or how, how, how would you say? How, what's, what's your intro to it? When was the first time someone said to you, you have something special? Or you said to yourself, I think I have something special? Oh, I always knew. Oh, for sure. Okay. From, from like yeah. elementary school. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 Right in, yeah. It was right in here, though. It's, it's, <laughs> matter of fact. No, I just knew that I wanted to be um, an artist. I knew that I wanted to, whether it was like, I was very into like musical theater, like when I was younger, because I was like, I want to be an actress too, and I want to be a singer. Like, I know I can sing. And I remember I was graduating. Um, elementary school and they were giving out like singer the best singer of the year or of the class and it was a performance me. school or no it was just a public school okay, but they okay. had like the performance arts like i went to school in brooklyn mm-hmm. okay so um and they gave it to this girl and she didn't sing at all like she didn't even really talk so i was so confused as to how she could win singer of the year and i was furious and I, it just like lit a fire underneath so me. That's, I was your, like, that's your villain moment? Yeah, I was like, okay. <laughs> I was like, all right. Okay. okay. So then in middle school, I went to a performing arts school in Brooklyn. And then I was like, I'm going to be in the choir. And I went so hard to try to be in the choir. They didn't let me in. What? They didn't let me in the choir. I don't know. Me in school just don't have a good like a history. Mm-hmm. Just me in the, me in the school. public school system. Yeah. Um. So then I was like, all right, well, like, forget you then and then i went into theater and then every like time they only did musicals and i would just go so hard and like because my theater teacher knew that i could sing so he would always want to give me the singing parts and the choir teacher who was also involved in it she just hated she hated on me for whatever reason and i was just like well man now i'm the ladybug so what are you gonna do about it? <laughs> and it was just always I'm the like, ladybug. <laughs> and it was enjoy just, that. No, I'm the ladybug. <laughs> so the ladybug's the star. Yes, I love she, it. She was. Yeah. It was like well, the ladybugs were kind of like the dream girls, and I was so okay. like, uh, like yeah, yeah. And so um, that was like a full. I don't know. I don't know where these schools get all this money to put these plays on. 
in like Brooklyn, but mm-hmm. that was a full production. And so um, then I went to high school and I got into the choir, but the teacher did not like me. What still. were you doing to these teachers? I just wanted to sing. And so I'm just like, he would never give me a solo. Were and you walking one- in like, I'm here? Well, why would yeah. I not be confident? Okay, yeah, okay. all right. There it is. I'm trying to, I'm trying, see, no, because, no. No, the but I was just like. Confidence, yes, but you got to understand. I mean, obviously, you're an adult now. But as a kid, you don't understand this, is that most people who are teachers are people who really wanted to do it. Yeah. For some oh, no, reason, I that something now. happened, and now they, they, you know, they still love it, and they're teaching. So oh. when they, when you walk in with all that confidence, Ladybug. Mm-hmm, ladybug. <laughs> they like, hey, man. Hey, get her the fuck out of here! Hey, right? hey. I ain't no, got yeah. time for this shit. Yeah. No, my high school. Stun on me. Yeah. My high school choir teacher was definitely like bitter, but then he, we were learning a lot of like music theory, like mm-hmm. um, mm-hmm. things that I probably don't like incorporate into like my life now. But I just wanted to like we were singing opera, so I was like I. He was like, "You're gonna be a tenor," and I'm like, "Well, I can sing everything." I was like, well, I wanted to be a soprano. And then he was like, no, you're a tenor. You're there. And I'm just like, that's crazy. And I was like, well, actually, I can sing baritone, too. So, like, I was just going oh, yeah. to You were oh, a yeah, mess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's starting to come out. Yeah, yeah, the more yeah. she talks, I get it. it's starting to come it. out. No, I wasn't saying it like that. I'm saying it now like that. But I was just like, hey, like, I can do more than just this. Like, mm-hmm. don't box me in. Mm-hmm. He was like, you're going to do what I tell you to do. And I'm just like, Which oh. is fair, too. Which is fair. From, you know what I mean? Like, you don't want to be I boxed in. I guess maybe in. I was trying to be, like, a teacher's pet. Mm-hmm. But because it, I just wanted just like the birds, the wrong way. but he just didn't. But also, he was just like angry. He was just like an angry man, and so <laughs> an angry man. <laughs> so then, the one time he gave me a solo, he knew I was sick. Oh, that's, he knew that's I was sick, part. and then I remember I was sitting in like the courtyard or whatever. We had a performance, and I cracked, and I just cried, and I ran away. Like my voice cracked, and I just cried, and I ran away. And then I was like, another villain story was invented. I was like, oh wow, yeah, this will never happen to me again. And so um, then I got a vocal coach and my mom, like, I was like, this is what I want to do. Regardless of all that work that I did, like, I went to, like, summer programs or whatever. But um, then I started to, I asked my mom, I was like, I want to be a singer. And she was like, you know, most parents in the in the industry, they're just like, no. They're mm-hmm. like, I'm not, I don't want you to be a part of this. It's like a brutal experience. And they don't want their kids to have to go through these things because they see it firsthand. Yeah. yeah. And I was like, okay whatever now i'm on the internet i'm on tumblr i'm developing my own like you go find it yourself yeah i'm on my own i create my own world and this whole community of like new york tumblr kids and we're just like running around the city like now i can hang out in the city and i'm like how old are you at this time i'm like 16 17 Mm -hmm. and um i'm no longer oh no i was still in school at the time but i was like i was in high school but like 10th grade Mm -hmm. and then um I started to develop like a fan base pretty much on Tumblr um, by just, you know, just being weird and quirky and experimenting with my look. And then like I started to make covers on YouTube and just singing and like showing that I can sing. Mm-hmm. And then um, people started to like find out. And I think I was at a BMI panel one time with my mom and because she would always bring me to these events and they were doing a Q&A and it was like Lorianne Gibson and like a bunch of other people i can't remember like who else was up there i just remember because how could you ever forget laureate mm-hmm, mm-hmm. but so you don't remember Boom Cat. <laughs> yeah. You yeah don't remember Boom Cat. Mm-hmm. so i um stood on the line for the q a and i was like can i sing like this seems like the right room to Perfect, just be singing mom, you had you had <clears throat> you didn't tell your mother that no. you were about to do this at all no yeah and so <laughs> oh, i just shit. stood in the line and i was like can i sing and then they were like yeah and i, I sang this song called black and gold by sam sparrow and then everyone there was like a room full of people who wanted to figure out how to be a part of the industry mm-hmm. whether it's producer or mm-hmm. like uh executive or whatever and so so many people then like ran up to me and my mom after like do you have a manager like do you have a producer do you have a, like what are you doing yeah. and then my mom was like okay and then as i started to like build this fan base on tumblr um people started to like reach out and wanted to work with me and so my mom then put me in with someone that she knew and trusted at the time and I started to just like uh, make original music, mm-hmm. like, you know, work with some writers and producers. And 
I was still in high school, but then it was becoming difficult. So then I started to get homeschooled mm -hmm. because like I would be in the studio really late and we were trying to get me a yeah. record deal. And it was so funny because I would go to all the labels and like now that I think about it, I'm so embarrassed, but I would be like in front of like Lior Cohen and like all these, uh, I think even L.A. Reid and like dancing and singing and like doing this whole stupid little show. And they were like, hmm. She's cute. And my like spirit was so crushed because I'm so young, just like standing in front of these people, like, mm -hmm. pick me. And yeah. then they're like, no. And I'm like, all right, fine. And I just developed. Actually, I was younger than that. I was younger. I wasn't like 17 at that time. I was probably like 14, 15. Mm -hmm. And then, um, yeah. So I, looking I back out, on it, would you do that again? No. Why not? Give. Because we, we, want, we want the audience to understand the process. Well, also, times are so different now. I think that right. when I was um, first starting, like, there was still this, I guess, old school mentality at, like, record labels um, and, like, artist development. And, like, that's not necessarily a thing mm -hmm. anymore because we have platforms like, TikTok or Instagram right now and in YouTube where so many people are kind of just becoming like overnight like sensations just mm -hmm. so because do you, do you they're feel like themselves. that's good or bad though or both I think that it's um both I think that there's pros and cons to it because now I mean it's kind of just strange because everyone like thinks that they're like an and a rapper and an artist and I think that it's great that people like obviously everyone loves music it's the universal language so yeah, people mm -hmm. if you have the ability to make music like why wouldn't you mm -hmm. and then there's platforms where like it can reach people hundreds millions of people like in a second so why would you not share that and I think that there's a difference between people who just enjoy like making music and then people who like want to be a star right because even and I learned that very early on, like just with working with a bunch of songwriters, because I'm like, these people are so talented. Like, why aren't they like celebrities? Right. Why aren't they like bigger? Like, why aren't they superstars? And it's just everyone doesn't want to be that, you mm -hmm. know, like you can be talented and creative and like have all these ideas, but not everybody to be in front of the camera and to be like the face of it all. Like you really have to have tough skin. Right. And that's what I think is a dangerous part of um that people aren't really like aware of, especially like the kids who like are just like putting out songs online. And then when it comes to, like mental health, it's like they're not prepared for that. Like not everybody has that thick of skin to be in this industry to that capacity. Yeah. Well, I would, I would kind of dare to say, I'm not, and I'm sure what, I'm not sure which part you're saying you would do differently, but I think you having those moments of mm -hmm. uh, disappointment. Yeah. Um, but you still going through your routine. You still yeah. going through your act and step act and stepping up and just, you know It prepared put you. you it it yeah. really prepared you and 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 hardened you in a way to where once you get into the, really get into this mm -hmm. You know what I mean? You got to have a tough outer shell to Well, yeah. Cause, I cause, guess you're right. Those Deal. blows keep coming. They don't yeah. stop. They don't. Yeah. They don't stop. Yeah. It get the blows get heavier actually. Oh, trust yeah, me. Yeah, yeah. As, you, can, as it, you continue to grow in this thing, yeah. Oh, yeah. The, the, sure. the bag is heavier and the, and, and the losses are heavier. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So it's like you you were you were courageous very early. I'll give you that. Yeah, I mean, well, my mom, she's taught me to be <laughs> <laughs> to be that way. But um, you're right, I guess. I, I, I wouldn't change anything, honestly, because everything that I went through from a young age, through this industry, through the labels that I've been at, and now being independent, like it's all made me the woman and the artist that mm -hmm. I am today. Mm -hmm. And right now, even though I've I got signed to the first label when I was seventeen and I'm twenty seven now. So that's ten years ago. Yeah. And I feel like just so refreshed and like mm -hmm. new because I'm so much more sure of who I am just as a human mm -hmm. and as an artist and I know what I like and I went through all these things where I listened to everyone because I thought that they knew it was best for me and and now I'm just like when I'm in the studio I have just, just a different energy mm -hmm. and love because there was a certain point where I just felt like I was just doing homework or doing like a science mm. project when I was recording a song and like whenever I would write they would be like oh it's not good it's not good instead of like 
having a team around me that encouraged me to um, to be better and, and to, to not even to be better, to but better. to get my mm. ideas like mm. out. Right, mm. right, right. Yeah. You know, right. and I think that I don't take anything personal. Obviously, like this is this industry. I learned that from young, and like I'm sure, like my mom kind of like prepared me for that as well too, and also tried to protect me as much as she could from the evils. Um, but I think now at this age that I'm at and the space that I'm in in life, I'm so beyond excited. And a lot of people probably would think that at this point I'd be jaded, you know, and are mm-hmm. like tired of it. But I always, I have this saying where it's like, if your favorite artist gave up when things got too hard, they wouldn't be your favorite artist today. And I fully believe that. And there's mm-hmm. so many examples like, and even artists who are just receiving their flowers for that I've been following for a while, like whether it's Doja Cat, I've been looking at mm-hmm. her since like yeah. SoundCloud days and on Tumblr yeah. and even yeah. SZA. Like I've been listening to all these, art- even Kendrick, I've been, listening, I've been listening to all these people from like The Jump and The Weeknd and mm-hmm. everyone. Like mm-hmm. it's just like, that's why I have such an, uh, a love for it because I see like what happens when you stay the course mm-hmm. and when you fully believe in yourself and when you create a team around you that can you know, help you bring your dreams to fruition. Yeah. That's dope. Mm-hmm. At 27, let me think. Was I on the bench at 27? I think so. Yeah, yeah. You had been benched. I had been benched. What you does that mean? Benched. Put on the shelf. Put on the shelf. I mean, oh. we, we, you know, we we connected to sports. Yeah. Like, yeah. we both grew up playing sports, so it's like everything with us with music, <laughs> we look at it at, in, a, in a sports way, too. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Uh, but he was on the shelf. After having a hit record, mm-hmm. hit album... Yeah. Having label dispute. Well, that's why I also like when I first like became uh, independent, mm-hmm. I was so scared because I'd been like I'd been in Atlantic, I've been at Rock Nation and I'm like, what do I do? Like yeah. how do I do this? Yeah. Like mm-hmm. what and am you have I... been at two of the biggest Yeah, yeah so I'm just yeah. like, yeah. what do you like when you have people like Charlie Walk in your face, like, you're three minutes away and like everyone's just like, You got this and I'm like, Well, now I'm independent. So mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. and I was like I was so scared, and I was like, "How do I even like get in with producers? Like, how do how, I?" How did you make that turn, though? What What made you go from from Atlantic in the Rock Nation and all of these buildings to becoming your own building? Well, what I was, was with dis- Atlantic for three years, and you know, things weren't going as I expect them to have gone in the in that three year span, mm-hmm. and you know, so we parted ways due to some things, mm-hmm. and. It was fine. And then obviously I like, you know, I'm from Brooklyn. So we like, and my mom's obviously from Brooklyn. So we had like connections over at Rock Nation. And that was just like so cool to me to be like, oh my God, I'm a Brooklyn girl. Yeah. Sign of Jay-Z. Woo-hoo. <laughs> yeah. um, and so I was there and a lot of interesting things happened there as well too. I got to work with The Dream and Tricky on a project. Mm-hmm. And and um it was just really an awesome experience that I learned too. I would go into that office every day, like I was going to school. I'd be like, "What are we doing?" Yeah. Like, and um, after being with them for three years too, like I just wasn't in the place that uh, I wanted to be yet. And so, my mother and I, we just took a risk mm-hmm. in wanting to be independent, and um, it was scary at first, especially financially too yeah that's the um, part yeah that is the toughest part of being independent just finding you are the bank yeah, yeah. no you are the bank you mm-hmm. are the bank and then de- building a team around you of people because then you have to like outsource things yeah. like a yeah. publicist yeah. And, yeah. and it's a and, lot of favors yeah and it's, it's a lot of favors. favors but then i realized too um we even did a song together remember that mm-hmm. one time that yep. uh we had that session put it out on soundcloud <laughs> that was me like finding like getting into my um yeah. songwriting yeah. pocket um but it was the greatest decision i could have ever made because it just taught me more about myself and um i also realized like in being an art like when you're signed to a label you're kind of like sheltered you're so like baby. That's was my experience where it's like your A and R is setting up the sessions for you. Like yeah. I'm not developing relationships with these producers or these other artists mm-hmm. that I'm working mm-hmm. with and these songwriters. I'm just like showing up it's for work. Go, it's a lot know? of go between. Yeah, yeah, I'm just like showing up, and I'm like, that's not. And all all my peers that I'm like friends with, I'm like, that's not their experience. Like, why is that my experience that I'm just doing homework 
And that's why I was like falling out of love with this whole cycle and being so disappointed when things didn't work out where it's like yeah. now, like I'm so proud of the work that I'm doing, mm-hmm. regardless of like how anyone feels about it, because I know what went into this and the whole and, process. You know of what, it. And I don't want to interrupt you, but that's 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 a that's kind of crazy. Right. Because most artists enjoy the the pampered stage the coddling. the coddling yeah you know what i'm saying where they're being waited on hand and foot and mm-hmm. just you know make sure my per diem is and tell them i want this at the studio and then they just you know and you on the other hand are like you didn't feel hands on enough yeah to understand how the earth was moving around you oh no oh my gosh one time you. i was like <laughs> i won't say who obviously but i was with an artist and i was in a session and I was like so excited. I'm like, oh my god, you have like a violinist here. Like, blah blah blah. You're not gonna. And he was like, yeah, I'm just gonna leave. And I'm like, what? You're not gonna wait for the violinist to get here? Like, no, I'm done. And I'm like, you don't want to see what he's gonna put on your song? He's like, no, they'll take care of it. And I'm like, you just started, and this is how you're acting. Oh, this is a disaster. <laughs> It was crazy. I could not believe it. I'm there like, oh my god! But those experiences. a lot of those. I was like, this is crazy. Like, I want to be in the studio. I want. I'm not leaving without you my song. You want the full experience. Yeah, yeah, but also like, I'm not leaving without a balance of my song. I don't care who I want. Like, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, I now have learned that lesson. Where it's like, I need to leave with the bounce. I want to listen to it in the car. I want to see how it sounds. Like, I'm, wanna... leaving, <laughs> I'm leaving here with something. So your session isn't paid. I don't know. I don't know who's supposed to pay what. But you better put something on this floppy disk. <laughs> 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 I also <laughs> used to think because like I was recording a bunch of songs that like I didn't necessarily had anything to do with mm-hmm. um, that I needed to like if I didn't finish the song in one day that I was a failure. Hmm. Like it was so crazy. I was like, oh, my gosh, like I didn't finish cutting this song in like one day. I only cut one song today. Like I'm I'm a failure. And now yeah. that I'm like, I'm like, wait, I want this to be perfect. Like and and that takes time takes i can't time. just like and sometimes it does happen where like you're in it you catch a vibe mm-hmm. and like you cut yeah. the song mm-hmm. and it's like great like the first time you cut it but it's like no i want to go back like but also like listening to it i thought that like once you cut it it's there it's bounced that's it yeah i learned that from static like yeah, static was I, great. I, I was the guy that record five six songs in a day and make the track mm-hmm. and write it and do the whole like I was that guy. I'm 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 on a thousand. Yeah. And I would watch Static just sit at the board and listen to a track and really lay two feel. lines and then get back in front of the board and just kind of sit and smoke a little bit, go back, lay a third line, and then yeah, I'm gonna come back tomorrow. It's gonna be it's, it's coming. It's coming. Yeah. Like, it's coming. <laughs> All right. Yeah. And I watch him work on a song for like Four days, mm-hmm. yeah. yeah, and then listen to it. I'm a, I'm a, I'm gonna come back. I'm gonna come back tomorrow. Listen to it. Come back. Listen to it. I need, to, I need to switch this up. And after you, not you, you, you're not done. And then I watch him do that, and it's why he's Static Major. It's mm-hmm. why he has the hit records that he has because he just took his time. He took his time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I think, I, I think that's um, something that's especially with social media. Because social media put a spotlight on the experiences. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Or a spotlight on the experiences that people wanted to push out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I think, a, 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 you know, even when people start doing the whole, I don't write nothing down. Mm-hmm. And yes, there are artists and writers who do do that yeah. and are really good at that. But that's not for everyone. Exactly. Yeah. You know, and I, I think what's been promoted is that makes me more talented mm-hmm. than such and such. Mm-hmm. Which mm-hmm. is not the truth. Yeah. Absolutely. You know what I mean? You know, like we we go back and Tupac was a poet. You know what I mean? So he was he literally has books of poems. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But then you have Jay Z on the other hand that's like, listen, I, I get it off from my mind. Mm-hmm. You can you it can go both ways. Mm-hmm. And I, I think with the newer and the younger generation, it got put into this space of I do it quick. Oh, you know, I do my records in fifteen minutes. Mm-hmm. Well, some of those records sound like 15 minute records. Yeah. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? I don't care how many of them you did today. Right. Maybe you should have took 15 days. Right. Yeah. Right. Because anybody that's ever worked with Michael Jackson, who I will argue and fight with anyone is the greatest mm-hmm. singer, entertainer, everything of all time. Mm-hmm. You would be in that in the studio with that man and might get a record done in a month. Mm-hmm. Yep. 
depending on how he, you know. But that's why it sounds the way it does. Yeah. He wasn't coming out of that studio with mediocre records mm-hmm. or a mediocre feel. Yeah. Anything. You know what I mean? Because, yes, everything is subjective. We do mm-hmm. music. It's, it's someone's opinion. If it's going to be a fail, it's, it's going to be a colossal fail. You know what I mean? Not a but, small one. But sonically, it's going to be right. Yep. Mm-hmm. The mix is going to be right. Yep. They're going to make sure the words make sense next to each other. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, Michael Jackson wasn't just doing a vibe. <laughs> he <doesn't want> <laughs> and sometimes I personally feel like the word vibe gets thrown out as this thing of, and you said that too, of, you know, it's, it's not judged the same. Because it's like, mm-hmm. oh, it's just vibing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you want somebody yeah. to take their time and listen to it and pay for and all these other things that you you really aren't putting your full into. Yeah. That's why I respect what you're saying of like, no, I want to be a full part of it. Mm-hmm. I really want to I want to put in the work. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, that's what I think was so special about um not this last project but about the one that I did with Timbaland. Mm-hmm. Because um Who's my favorite producer by the way? Iconic. Yeah. Um and so he produced my whole album Space and Time mm-hmm. and we did a documentary about it that's on my YouTube. Mm-hmm. And it just goes through the whole process of like COVID and us just like, I never met him before in my life, but I was obviously such a huge fan mm-hmm. and he'd followed me on Instagram and so we would he would send me beats and then I would just like write to them and that's I'd like be freaking out. And I would just put them on YouTube, like these one minute clips that we would just do side by side and... And then after like the 10th one, we were just like, we have to figure out how to get to each other so we can like finish this project. And we did. And we put it out and we shot sick music videos to it and all independent. And like, I couldn't believe that. That's crazy. That that happened. And, mm-hmm. you know, like obviously people are still like discovering the project. Yeah. And, like as people are discovering me and my music from like nine, 10 years ago. Mm-hmm. There's so, always um, someone who hasn't heard it yet. Exactly. And... It's funny because a lot of like my fans who have heard these songs before, they're so frustrated because like, where's the new music? And I'm like, listen, there's millions of people. Like last year I had maybe like 2 million monthly listeners on Spotify, maybe like Mm -hmm. Mm 1.6. I just checked. I have 10 minutes, 10 million and counting. Come on now. Of music that's been there. And that's just on Spotify. Like I haven't released anything new. Yeah. Yeah. In I put out a single last year, but um, that's it. Like I haven't put out like a new like project, and I'm just like, wow! I can't believe like platforms like a TikTok can really just like I'll take you somewhere else. Take you somewhere. Yeah. And you and you have ownership of all of your music now, right? Yeah. Not all of it, but that song, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. I was just like, because when it first started going up, I was that's like, what we're gonna oh. promote. We're gonna promote the things you own. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Side, dark side, now. Yeah. right now. Yeah, <laughs> but it was so crazy because I'm like, oh, that's so crazy. Like, I'm like, oh, I don't know if I own that song because I did that song when I was at Atlantic. Okay, and so I'm just like, oh, like that's crazy. Clyde's going up. Like, I don't get anything from that. Like, woohoo! And my mom was like, actually, you do. Like, when we left Atlantic, we got that song, and I'm like, now wait, you, yeah, what? Yeah, yeah. Now you lit. Yeah, now you lit. <laughs> Like, yeah. that's crazy. Now you interacting. Yeah, yeah, side yeah, by yeah. side. I'll do it. I'll do it with you. No problem. <laughs> no, so that it's... And you have like, two versions of the Collide record, yeah? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so there's the one with Tyga, which is like the original mm-hmm. one. And so on my Project Dark Side that I just put out is the solo, the solo. version. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Which yeah. Um, a lot of people were asking for. Mm-hmm. No, which I think is, it's cool. I mean, like you said, that discovery is endless. And it goes back to just... Just stay the course and do mm-hmm. good stuff. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Cause when people accidentally hit that page or go down that rabbit hole and mm-hmm. bump into it, you know, it's like finding a, a dope restaurant. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It is. And they're like, it oh, is. that restaurant's been around for like however long. I was like, well, yeah. like, really? there's, now there's it's my new people. spot. There's always those people who are like, I've been going there. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know what? I like it. Now. I, I, I like it. Okay, now. maybe <laughs> I'll see you there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I mean, as long as you're as long as you're doing that, I feel like I feel like musically, like you know, the sky's the limit for you. I mean, you I mean, just do what you, feels good. Yeah, you've been you. doing it. You said yeah. for a long time. I mean, you've been doing it for ten years, which is which is crazy. But but longer than that, you've been doing it professionally for professionally ten years. For 10 but, years yeah. But yeah, yeah, you've been in but, this thing half your life. But I mean, yeah. you're still extremely young. I mean, look at SZA, dude. Yeah, like, yeah. She's like now a super megastar. Listen, SZA ain't leaving the house. 
for less than seven figures. Need it. I know that because I had a conversation on the phone with Top Dog about it. Need it. Listen, we somebody called me about scissor, like, yeah, you know, can you get the scissor? I said, I can call Top. Yeah. <laughs> but, I called uh, Top Top, said, yeah, 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 homie. If they ain't got I said, oh, oh yeah, I love this talk. Yeah. I love this talk. <laughs> hey, if you guys don't have this for scissor. Yeah. It, it is She's what it not is. coming. She's not coming, and I'm not going to make any phone call for you. That's okay? it. <laughs> and I, lo- but I love to hear that. Yeah, it's you what know what I'm saying? Deserve. Like for for like you said, it's what she deserves. Mm-hmm. She's worked so hard to get to this space, mm-hmm. and she, they know they know the type of room she gonna fill up. Yeah, but people see like they just see like where she's at now, and they don't really like get to. Which is why I love like when artists do documentaries because mm-hmm. you really get to like see their growth yeah yeah and like where they came from Mm -hmm. and i think that's so beautiful and it gives you like a different level of like appreciation and respect for them as well too like people just read headlines and they just listen to a song for two seconds a snippet like every our attention spans have gotten so short and i think that that kind of sucks like as like time progresses like our attention spans just like shrink Mm -hmm. and then as like I'm so grateful for TikTok, but it's like the one second, like what there was that moment of um like Steve Lacey, who's like one of my friends, and there was like obviously one of his songs went crazy Super on TikTok crazy. and it was number yes, my one. My daughter's favorite and, artist. That's, no, I love Steve. Zoe like, loves yeah. Zoe loves Love Steve. She's to like, death. He has so many other great songs, but yeah. But then like <laughs> everyone gets tickets for his concerts and then mm-hmm. like there was that one video that went around where it was like no one knew the rest of the words to the song they just knew the hook and they were right. like beating him down about that on social media but it's just like you guys are standing there you should feel stupid right you guys should feel dumb that you don't know the words to this artist that you just paid however many dollars to go to their show standing there whatever day this is this is the time to- you wanted to waste your time coming to somebody's show that you want to then like talk shit about that you don't know and it's just like we don't we, the the respect for artists who like get on stage and like put this work into like do this obviously like people they don't they don't care like well, but i hope that a shift is beginning where people are becoming more just um appreciative of everything well the tough part about us as entertainers is that for people it's it's so disposable yeah you know what i mean for some and for them for most people it's just about the end result yeah, that's so true. Yeah. It's just about, okay, entertain me. Mm-hmm. You know, I paid this money, entertain me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, if something goes faulty within that entertainment, they could care less about that. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? They care less that it's not your fault, that the building couldn't house the power that 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 is, is, is covering your LED, and then yeah. your LED goes down, and then your Pro Tools, which is was running fine before sound check, all of a sudden your Pro Tools rig is on the fritz and then your backup pro tools rig it ain't running like they don't care you're standing there holding the bag like i promise we we rehearsed for six months for this yeah <laughs> to get this right for you but you'll still see on the gram the show was weak i couldn't believe i paid and it's like there's this this disconnect with the work that we put in not even versus what they want but how do you say that like we're trying. Yeah. I promise you we are. I think sometimes if, you have to say that. Though. And if it goes bad. I think people respect that. Yeah. Too. And mm-hmm. I think more artists should stand in front of that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Hey, listen, if, if you got a bad show or you were sick or you now with the platforms that we have, it's nothing to go on there and say, hey, man, I had a bad night last night. Yeah. Or even I'll be like, back, though. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I think that it's just also like it means more and like you develop a, a a different connection with your audience when you are vocal about like mm-hmm. the mess ups, yeah. you know, like I was at um, the, the weekend show that he did at the, oh, when he got at sick. SoFi mm-hmm. and he got sick and he was like, you know what? Like I'm not, I want to give you guys a great show. So I'm not going to put you through this. If I, if I know that's not gonna be the best and we'll reschedule it. And like, I think for the most part, like your real fans, mm-hmm will appreciate something yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. That you want to give them the best. Come on, fans. We're trying. We're trying our best. <laughs> but I think like real <laughs> fans understand that. Go make, go make me get my Twitter fingers back. Yeah, oh, and that right. differentiates like the fans from just oh, the people real. that are when just people like, just watching. Yeah. People yeah. just hovering. But we around. need all of it. Yeah. 
ultimately because the business that we're in is it's entertainment. Entertainment. Mm-hmm. And it's controlled by the people. And either it's love or hate or it's a little bit of both. But you need the people. For me though, I've I feel like I've entered a space where like obviously it still gets rough. Like, you know, there's comments that you see online and like when you're being attacked, like it doesn't feel good. But um and I actually one of my fans like at DM'd me the other day, like, how do you do it? And I'm like, you know what? I've like made more of an effort to realize that at the end of the day I am a human as well too. And just to keep good people around me. And I'm starting to do this thing too, where it's like, if I feel like I've gotten too like engulfed in my phone, like I'm just like, <laughs> the way I just said, starting to do this thing as if it's not a thing. Like, mm-hmm. I'm just like, you know what? I'm just going to pick up a book and read. Like, even if yeah. I have to force myself mm. to like remove my focus from my phone, I'm just going to just, so I'm always walking around with my book now. I'm just like, okay, like I'm too crazy in my That's phone. Dope. Like, let me just. Because a lot of people aren't doing that. Yeah, I'm not A lot doing of people that. aren't tapping in. I'm going to read the book on my phone. <laughs> I, I thought I could do that, but do. I thought I could do that, but then I can't. Or even on my iPad, I'm like, you know, I'm gonna read on my iPad. Alert like, come in. <laughs> yeah, and I'm just like, you know, I can't. I have. To, I need self discipline. Yeah, like I really need to be more disciplined. Mm-hmm. And like, if I'm on my phone, like I have, like I even deleted. Sorry, I'm a little sick. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> I deleted like Instagram and Twitter from like my screen, but I can still like pull my search thing down and search Instagram and Twitter. And like, I found myself doing that way more than if it was just on my yeah. f- home screen. And no, it's, very, like, it's, it's extremely addictive. Especially, not good for my brain. And especially for <clears throat> your generation. Yeah. yeah. Because you grew up in it completely. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right? So I know how to tap out of it because I haven't always had it. Right. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Even though in our generation as well, it's still... Uh, people who are addicted to it as well. Or the constant searching but, your name, and yeah, what people but, are saying but about you. Your generation, it's com- is completely. It's like cartoons. For a them. part of it's your a part life, of your everyday life. Yeah. This is this is what y'all do is is figuring out what's going on in the gram, getting as much foolish information as possible all day long. Like you said, it's hard not to type in your name and see what they're talking about yeah. or see what you know. It's. It's all a. I, I say it's it's a it's a process of just finding what works for you and what don't work for you. Because for mm-hmm. some people, them being fully locked in mm-hmm. has actually become they, a business. They know how to get yeah get yeah. something out of that. Yeah, it's I don't like, know how to get nothing out of that. But it's that is, no, I've me. seen. I know so many people where it's just like they're just they have they just to be have on their phone. It. They have yeah. to record everything, and I'm just like I, I can't, can't do it. Be yeah. bothered. Yeah, I can't yeah. do that. I was at um. My he's like one of my best friends, Yachty. He had a listening for his album in New mm-hmm. York, which was so sick. It was like an like a, a full experience at the Planetarium in Jersey, and it was like so so proud of him. And I'm on that album too. Go check he's it out. Super talk, talk to talk, talk to talk. Um, it's called Let's Start Here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but, uh, <laughs> but um, there was this person sitting in front of me, and it's in a theater, by mm-hmm. the way, like full visual sound, like. You need to focus. Yeah. Mm-hmm. There's nothing else to focus on. This person sitting directly in front of me the whole time, just scrolling, scrolling, scrolling on their phone. Like, I'm like, how do you attention. still have Anything things to look at? On. Like, you yeah. haven't hit your limit, like, of scrolling. Like, you just <laughs> scroll, scroll. And I was like, I don't want to be this person. Yeah. Like, I, I never want to be this person. Yeah. You don't want to miss the moments. Yeah. Like, and you miss so many moments that yeah. way. There's, or even like when you're in the car and you're traveling, like, just in your phone scrolling, there's life happening around you. Mm-hmm. It's just crazy. Life is so short. Why do you want to waste it looking in your phone? Also, yeah. you get back looking at, problems. Looking at so other people's like, lives. Looking, looking at, at other people's, people's lives. lives. Looking at other yeah. people's lives. Yeah. You're an old, old soul. Like how you think. Thanks. So you're not <laughs> only uh, colliding, you know what I'm saying? Um, Going back to the top, and the TikTok thing is so cool. I gotta, I gotta crack the TikTok code. I think they love hey me man, on TikTok. I just, just put music out, and if they find it, they find it. Just like trying to get. Hey, TikTok. TikTok. I've grown to like TikTok though. Like hey, TikTok. sometimes I'll make like. I know I'm older, <laughs> but I'm a cool guy. No, there's cool people on TikTok. Yeah. All right, TikTok. Come on, TikTok. All right, TikTok. How let me tick? How let me talk, 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 talk. <laughs> Um, but you're also you also, um are capitalizing on your musical theater 
experience. Yeah, hey, now you now you're on the screens and shit. <laughs> yeah, now you're doing TV. <laughs> now you're grown baby. You know, yeah. <laughs> craft services every day. Yeah, you at craft know, service craft, every day. Yeah. The craft service is dangerous. Oh, you know, it's a fire. <laughs> it's dangerous. That's all he cares about. That's all I care about. He like, Jay, they got craft services on this movie they offer me, right? Mm-hmm. They That's got craft. All I care. He'll I take be- less for a good craft service. I become friends. <laughs> With the person who runs craft services. No, I try to stay away because I'm just like, I have to stay like fit. I'm the honey bun. But king. it's like being a part of the the Grownish production because it's like Disney, you know? Mm-hmm. So they're no, say like, it again. They, say, it, say it being part of what? The Grownish. Mm. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Shout out to my brother, mm. Kenya. Yeah. Very expensive over there. Yeah. yeah. No, yeah. It Bring your like, ass to the podcast, Kenya. You keep saying you come. <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. It was, it's just such a like cool experience and I've done like little things like here and there before like acting um, but this is like by far like the biggest thing that I've been a part of mm-hmm. and it's just I just had a fitting before I came here and I'm just like come on fitting oh my gosh like going to the lot like not everybody gets to like film something on a lot hell like, no hell so I'm like this like, they, they film it in their backyard like I have my trailer <laughs> and it's so nice oh, and I get to decorate trailer, my trailer okay. decorate like, your yeah. trailer yeah. shit yeah. Yeah, it's really cool. yeah. It's re- we're spoiled. As you should be. It's a great show. And y'all Sorry. doing y'all thing. As we should, though, because we film for a long time. Yeah. I mean, I, I, know, Six months. I know a lot oh, about shit. it because yeah. my little cousin is C.A. Wright. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? He's on the show. and Zeke. And, uh, yeah, oh, Zeke. My, my bad. My bad. <laughs> and um, I mean, then obviously, it's like our little brother, Trevor Jackson. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So we, we're, we're fully locked into what y'all doing. And, you know, just talking to him, talking to my, my little cousin, and, you know, he's like, does and the show goes, and then has to go yeah, play he's football crazy. for USC. Yeah. Yeah. I don't understand how he does. Yeah. He's in school. He's playing football. Yeah. He'll like go train in the morning and then come film for like he's hours. He's what, 17, 18? No, no, no. Now he's, he's, he's 20. He's 20, 20, 21 now. That's what it is. Yeah. I mean, he got, yeah, he, got he's energy. he got energy. He's That's the baby. What it is. He's the baby he got, of yeah, the show. He got energy. <laughs> has he sang for you yet? Yes. He be singing. I'm like, okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but he didn't tell us. Yeah. And then he just started yeah, singing. Sing too, yeah. And I'm like, Sierra. <laughs> what you do everything? That's everything. Crazy. <laughs> he literally does everything. He's so funny. He's always like inviting us to like the frat parties that are happening. I'm like, Sierra, I'm 27. I'm not going. You can't go to, to the your frat party. Try to act okay. like you he's like, he'll be like, we got a pajama jam going on. Here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, yeah, invite him to the pajama like, jam. Get to the pajamas. Yeah, you want to go hang out like, with the Alphas? And I go like, do they have a section? He goes, no. do they have a section? <laughs> Hey, dog, you got to relax. You, gotta, <laughs> you have to relax. You can't be I asking like, for a session. They don't have tables there. The fr- they don't have tables. Man, you better get you a keg. <laughs> you better get He's you a keg. He's always like showing up. He's like, this is where the venue is. I'm like, oh what, what, uh, my what, God. What fraternity do you pledge? Alpha. Oh, you pledge yeah, Alpha? Yeah, him and my yeah, big cousin. Him, got, and, him and Claudius. So they both oh, alphas. Claudius uh, Alpha too? Yeah, they both Alphas. They got a, it's they really got cool, a, though, because like because Grownish is about being in college, and he's actually he's there in college. Yeah. It's just like, and he's always so happy. We love you here. That's yeah, dope. Yeah, yeah. The now, young fella. So, for you, the acting side, mm-hmm. is it fulfilling enough? Because you know, we 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 Great always question. ask those questions mm-hmm. for people who were artists first, mm-hmm. singers first, mm-hmm. where you know, getting a show like Grownish, that's that's a hit record. Mm-hmm. Yes, it's a smash record. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So for you to get that. Before you get your super takeoff song, mm-hmm. is that fulfilling enough for you right now? Um, I don't know if I would like use the phrase fulfilling enough. I think that it's a huge accomplishment. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, but for me, like I'm always like striving to be bigger and better than I was yesterday. So like, yeah, I'm on Grownish now, and I'm like so like psyched about that but i'm already thinking about what's next like when grownish is done like what's the next film that i want to be a part of or like what's that angle that i want to take and like also but i separate those worlds okay like, they're very okay. different for me i don't blend them i personally don't even want to play a character that can sing mm-hmm. like I, okay okay for me this character that i play on grownish is very like not very similar but there are similarities to just like my actual like personality mm-hmm so I know that I'm like, oh, this is such a great like introduction to this world, and now I have like you know some my my foot in the door. The next thing that I do, I want like a bit more of a challenge, mm-hmm. like to play something that's not me right. to see if I right. actually this am, is familiar. Like, mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. this is familiar. Yeah, 
And so I'm just like, I want to see like my, how great my acting skills are yeah. for real. Like, so you're about to be in like Silence of the Lambs or some shit. Next. I would love to, to, to be like in a thriller. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like I would love to be in a thriller, some like sci-fi situation or like, I, I it was my dream to, well, it still is a dream of mine to be like in a scary movie. I just want to like see how good yeah. I am at dying. You want to run from somebody? See how good you yeah. are with dying? Yeah. You want to run? Yeah. You gotta okay. <laughs> like run from Jason? He yeah. not running, but you run yeah, and he yeah, still yeah. catches you some walking kind of like a motherfucker. <laughs> or like a drama. Like what's that? Like a, like a Gone Girl or like a... Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like what, what's gone that? Gone Girl was crazy. Or that show Last of Us that's out right now. It's really good. It is? It's really good. That shit wild. It's, I mean, it's, it's for me. I was too wild for me. The niggas is turning to zombies and shit. I'm, I love that oh, I like stuff. That, yeah, yeah, I ain't cool. I, ain't I love zombies. that. Stuff. Niggas start turning. Well, you said you are into it. I'm he into is. I'm Wait, not. okay. So then you need to watch the show called Alice in Borderland. It's Japanese. I just saw it's, the, uh, it's on Netflix, right? Cra- if you like Squid we just, Games, just scroll past it. If you like Squid Games, this mm-hmm. is way better. Yeah, it's so crazy. It's it's fucked up. Because the only problem, like The Walking Dead, had me in a chokehold for so long. No, like, I got over that show. And then and then I had to yeah, I'm I'm out here. Like, how much how much damn I'm out here he watching do? BMF like, and uh, shit, no. man. <laughs> I'm, I'm, but, but see, then I'm. Like, I mean, but then I'm into that I, too. I get it. I'm into that too. I gotta have all I'm, my I'm watching, pieces. I'm watching, or you know like Succession. Oh come on, Succession is my favorite you know, show. Succession is a is yeah. a vibe. Yeah, Succession is it. Sheesh. Come but on, they don't turn into zombies and be crawling on the floor and shit. I that shit is weird. I just watched Game of Thrones again. The whole season for like six, seven times. I got over that one. Yeah, Game of Thrones is shit. About to start Breaking Bad again for like the fifth time. That one's a classic. Come on, guys. Stay yeah. tapped in. Yeah. <laughs> I like the, I like dead people. Like the living the walk. You got to prepare yourself for this walking dead thing that's about to happen. <laughs> it's going to happen. It's not. Yeah, you do. Happen. Okay. And that's like in The Last of Us. Not in saying. our The day. Last of Us is more realistic. Not in our day. It can happen in our time. It, it's absolutely you see how these dr- You see how these drugs is making people act right now? Maybe not in our time, but like in... No, you the, think they ain't got a zombie somewhere right now? Didn't we already have like a fake Dolphins. zombie outbreak? You, they got a zombie They're somewhere Dolphins. right now. I think they do. They're testing on them. I think they do. <laughs> See how he's able to do what he does. I he really think got they a do. rap album coming probably, out. <laughs> he does have a rap album. <laughs> He probably dead, was, his debut album, be, Dead be or Alive. My he does have a rap album. <laughs> he does, Lil Zombie. Debut album, Dead or Alive. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> First single, I Stink. Um, <laughs> Justine. Do y'all ever even eat the snacks? You want some? No. <laughs> Sometimes we eat the snacks. The audience don't like when Tank be on here smacking this shit. Sometimes we <laughs> eat the snack. We eat the snacks. Justine. Where are you going? I want to know your top five. <laughs> your top five. <laughs> top five. Your top five, Justin's top five, <laughs> R&B artists, <laughs> R&B songs. Sing that again. Sing that again. Yo 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 yo. He's gone. Yo, He's gone. Top five. He's gone. Yo top five. <laughs> He's gone. Yo, yo, no, he be top five. Top five. Nigga, did you just yodel? Yeah. This <laughs> nigga is out of his mind. Woo! Don't that encur- was kind of crazy. Don't encourage that. That was crazy. Good. Your <laughs> top five R&B artists right now. Ooh, my top five. Okay, so I will let you guys know one thing. Mm-hmm. Okay. My, I'm, I'm a very indecisive person, mm-hmm. so I don't really have favorites of anything. So just, today, just, just, just today, today, right now, whatever comes um, to your mind. Pick five. So this is a band. Okay. Uh, their name is Salt. Salt. The lead singer. Uh, I think they may like switch out sometimes. I'm, I'm not too sure. I don't know like okay. too much about it. But Cleo Soul is like the singer. She's of the lead the band. singer. Yeah. Um. Okay, My so. favorite song is Masterpiece. So like, I haven't got the song yet. Don't do oh, that. Shoot, you're moving sorry. fast. Sorry. Uh, <clears throat> okay, so Salt. Uh, obviously, SZA right now is mm. going crazy. Her Love album SZA. is phenomenal. Yeah. Um, 
I mean, like, I have to put Beyonce in there because Beyonce is just the queen of all queens. Mm -hmm. Beehive over mm -hmm. here. Yes. Big beehive. Big I think we should buy her a phone for her birthday. <laughs> you should buy her. <laughs> <laughs> no, you said you wanted to call her. <laughs> are, no, you, are you threatening, you don't, are no, you threatening no, people that you, you would call her? Call you don't call Beyonce. She calls you. Yeah, yeah, there it is. If she wants there to find is. you, she'll find you. Who's, who, who told us that, too? She was like, yeah, I'll find you. Um, She will. It was a writer. Shit. Rico Love. Rico, uh, Rico Love. She called Rico. Yeah. He's like, yeah. hello? Yeah. But Kanye don't got no phone either, right? I don't think so. That man got a phone. Why he got to have a phone? Because right? <laughs> he be tweeting. <laughs> he be tweeting. <laughs> he be tweeting. <laughs> I feel like Kanye tells the person next to him. Absolutely. To tweet. <laughs> Absolutely. Hey, person next to me. No. Tweet. <laughs> he screenshot his text messages. And mm -hmm. posted them. He, he has did. a phone. He See? That. He got that. a phone. Okay, he's not in that same world. Okay, that's three. Is that three? Is that three? <laughs> Beyonce, um, Salt, uh, SZA, SZA. SZA. Mm -hmm. um, Jasmine Sullivan. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, Love that. Who else? Uh, we're, we're doing artists, and then what are the other categories? We're doing songs. Next. Songs next. Songs. Right. Yeah. So you got one more artist. One more artist. Oh, one more artist. <laughs> 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 the little voice from the back. sneaker artist in. Um, <laughs> Prince. <laughs> hmm. Who you got? Come on. Who you got? Let me look at my phone. Good, yeah, yeah. Go, go to Let's the source. See. Go to the source. Who's in the playlist? Who's getting run? Steve. Lacey. Ah. You know, I'm rolling. Having a moment. I fuck with Steve Lacey. Have I love moment. me some and like I that play his dope. album like on repeat. He's yeah. dope. He's dope. Yeah. So yeah. Okay, I like that. Okay, your top five. Here we go. Your top five R and B songs. Uh, Dangerously in Love. Hmm. Beyonce. Love that song. Um. Hmm. Masterpiece. Salt. Mm hmm. Um. Right now, it's Blind, SZA. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I song. like the consistency of the artist Artists and, and songs. the songs. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. Um, uh, I love Sunshine by Steve Lacey. Mm. I like, can't get enough of that song. Okay. And then... Um, hmm. Just give us a little vibe. I, feel, I see it. You see it? Is there? Just a little talent on R&B Mike podcast. Just a little bit. It's under the category of jazz, but I we'll think it's it. R&B. It's from this artist called uh, Vina. Mm -hmm. This is the It's called Sun, Moon, and Herbs. It's so good. Sun, Moon, and Herbs. Sun, Moon, and Herbs? Vina yeah. and Jack James. This song is oh, so Jack good. Oh, Jack James is dope. Yeah. So good. This song is my song right now. I had a little, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm about <laughs> um, to go listen to that. Yeah, that five? I, you gotta sit Is that down. five? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait, right and I love Solange. Oh, come yeah. on, give us a Solange. Oh, you want, you, you, you put her in song your, or you add your, your favorite your artist? Artist? Oh, I don't know what to do. Songs. I don't know what to do. <laughs> no, 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 listen, if you, if you want to have, you know. Uh, no, my favorite Solange Starting song. five and a six. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Somebody got to come off the bench. Um, my favorite Solange song, I mean, it's like hard to pick, but right now it's Sound of Rain. Mm. Solange, Sound of Rain. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we put, we, we giving her a song and we putting her on the artist. Listen, she too. into some real soulful shit. That's a shit. bonus. Yeah. She into yeah. some real soulful shit. Okay, <laughs> that's what I'm going to tell you right now. All right, here we go. Let's do something. We're going to build what we call. Oh, wait. Hmm? Inside My Love, <laughs> Minnie Ripperton. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Sign my love, Minnie Ripperton. Only because it's Minnie Ripperton that you sneak that in. I mean, can't, can't deny Minnie Ripperton. We're going to make a Voltron. What's All that? Right? Remember, What's that? Remember, a, a, a Transformer? No. Somewhat. No. <laughs> yes. It's a robot? It's not. It's a robot. But it's not a Transformer. <sighs> okay. So back in the day, right? <laughs> Voltron, there were these lions, right? And there was the red white, blue, yellow, and black lion. And so- Power they, Rangers. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love no, it. they were lions. Yes. And people yes. used to drive the lions. 
and they they were out of space lions. How are you and gonna then, drive a lion? Exactly, you would get it. It's, it's a mach- <laughs> it's a machine lion. They were machines, but they were made like, like lions, a, like a transformer. Right? Okay. Right? Okay. Okay. So and 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 people would they would they would drive them and fly them. You know what I'm saying? And then to fight evil the evil evil mm-hmm. zoids and if things yeah. would come. And so when it was time to fight the big evil monster, all the lions would come together and form one big like transformer. It, what, no, it's not a transformer. <laughs> It's what's the nigga that get all the little the little things? I think this is Transformer and Power Ranger put together. It's it's Voltron. It's Voltron. It's the five lions and they come together <laughs> to form Voltron. Okay. And he looks like a, a is human. Is that the V Tyrese be doing? I'm screaming. He's he stole that. <laughs> he stole that from the real Voltron. He don't even like Voltron. I thought he stole it from Pharrell. No, he stole it from Voltron. <laughs> He's a thief. Anyway, we're going to make a Voltron. Okay. Okay? The best. The best of the best. The best of the best. <laughs> All right. Where are you going to get okay. the vocals from, the performance style from, the styling from, and then the passion of the artist? We're going to start with the vocal. What artist are you taking the vocal from to make your Voltron? One artist. I'm going to take the voice of Jasmine Sullivan. Hmm. Sound like it. Sound like the right one. Okay. And then what else? Here we go. Hold on. I got you. Performance style. Beyonce. Hmm. Okay, you're ready. You're ready. All right. Styling. The clothes. The drip. Steve. Lacey? Yeah. Hmm. He's dripped out. Okay. So you want like a singing dark Beyonce? Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. Okay. Gothic. Go- gothic. Yeah. yeah. No, gothic. he's not gothic. Yeah, for us he's gothic. He's a little dark. What? Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. I think he he's... had devil horns on his shit. He's oh, no, dark. but that's not. <laughs> no, you can't look at his style <laughs> of clothing. You know, listen, he's fashion. No, but you're looking at his artwork. The artwork and the way he dressed is different. They all kind of go together. All right, here we go. And <clears throat> the passion of the artist, the heart, the grit. Oh. Hmm. Beyonce. Hmm. Double dose of B. Yeah. I'm rolling. Uh-huh. And I would I'm mix rolling. also Beyonce and Jasmine. Hmm. Oh, oh, As the voice. From her, yeah. It's from her soul. Yeah. It's from her soul for real. I like it. No, B I is, like it. B is. Ex- ex- I mean. I mean, I think she's the epitome of a, an entertainer. Like absolutely. Living, breathing right here today, like she goes crazy. To me, yeah. she's to me, she's top three of all time. And it, but it also goes yeah. back to our original start of our conversation of the artist development mm-hmm. and going through those phases of you know trying to figure it out. Mm-hmm. She had to figure it out like everybody else. Yeah. She had to sing in front of those same people you sang in front yeah. of. Yeah. Probably the exact same people. Exact same people. You know what I'm saying? And go through multiple deals and Mm -hmm. be signed to production companies. And I love the video. This is what builds that. Where um, I think it's when she put out her first album and she's doing a concert or I don't know if it was an award show. And she was like, they told me that I didn't have any singles on my album. Or they told me I didn't have one single on my album. They're like, they were right. I had five like Mm. singles from the album. I was like, period. Yeah. Yeah. And she had mm-hmm. it, she got her hands in it. So like Beyonce, Beyonce knows exactly what she wants. Mm-hmm. And if you work for Beyonce, she knows exactly what you do. Mm-hmm. You understand what I'm saying? And so th- those are real meetings. We happen. can't, we can't, we can't skip those steps. Can't skip those steps. You can't. Not if you, you want to be skip that. Those steps. But that's why there's a. That's what I was saying earlier. When there's so many people who have skipped all those steps, mm-hmm. so that when things really start to hit the fan, they don't know what to do or. Or how to um, like navigate those situations mm-hmm. because they just think everything comes to you. They think they just deserve everything. It's like you didn't do the groundwork. Didn't do the work. Didn't do the like work. they think it's like it's not that it's a bad thing, but some artists are like, oh yeah, I just started making music. I don't know. I just like made a song and now I'm lit. And it's like that doesn't last. Right. And you're gonna be in a very confusing place when it all disappears because you didn't prepare yourself for it. Yeah. Well, yeah, because there is... And no a, one around you prepared yeah, the you The rubber for meets it. the road at some point. You know yeah. what I mean? And so what that foundation is built on is eventually going to be tested. 
Yeah. Whether you like it or not. And I also think like it's very just damaging to the person too because they don't know what it's like to work hard for what they have. So they think they have this like this God complex of like this is what they deserve and how Mm -hmm. they like they're Mm -hmm. in this space and they keep trying to like reach this space. But as they fall off because they don't know how to sustain it it just like messes with their mental health and there's mm-hmm. nothing, there's no one to teach you what to do after that. Mm-hmm. So, Well, mental health is a thing right now just because, because you're listening to everybody have these conversations about you mm-hmm. firsthand. And they used to just talk around you. You know what I mean? Or you see Back it in the, in the newspaper, day. like but when it came now out. Now they talk they at you. directly to you. Yeah, literally. And if you're not, if you're not built a certain way, then, you know, that's very hazardous to Everyone, your health, period. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, you know, I encourage everybody, take the social media with a grain of salt. Mm-hmm. Good or bad. You, yeah, good that's what bad. I was going to say, good or bad. You can't good, like... Don't yeah. get too high yeah. on it. Yeah. Don't get too low on it. Yeah. Enjoy it. Be entertained by it. Make your money from it. Right. Do all of that. And just give yourself but, grace. Yeah, don't too, let it govern like, your life. Exactly. Don't let it govern your life. Don't let it change you. Be like Justine Scott. Oh no! Don't be like. Pick I up mean, a I book. Don't know. No, no. I'm not a role <laughs> model. Like, no, no, no. Yes, you are. <laughs> yes, you are. You're wrong. Pick up a book. Pick up a book. Pick no. up a book. I never want to be a role tank. model. Tank. Pick I'm up just a book. Like, tank. I. I dabble. I dabble in reading. I love audiobooks. You no. sound like Donald Trump just now. <laughs> I dabble. I dabble in reading. <laughs> I, I've seen so many books. The books, books are so great. Books are great. When things. you're on the treadmill, you read an audiobook. I watch movies. <laughs> on the treadmill? I'm on the treadmill, yeah. That's good, crazy. Good movies. <laughs> That's good, crazy. Good shows, good movies. All great people in those shows and movies. <laughs> Better than books. Books. This character is crazy. <laughs> Books dude, don't dude talk. Dude is out of control, you. man. This dude is out of control. Listen, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank guys you for your this time. So you, you, you're doing things. You know yeah. what I mean. Nah, and we are proud, proud of you. Of you. Super you. proud of you. We're proud of you first. You know what I'm saying. Yeah, Unc no. is proud of you. It's yeah, okay yeah. to call we, me Unc. We, okay. We've watched this whole yeah. this whole journey. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean. Of literally your mom giving me your mixtapes. Oh. You know what I mean? Like, seriously. No, no. My mom is so crazy. The other day, she got in a group chat. She like, I have these random group chats. And like, so the Jimmy, I just performed on Jimmy Kimmel. And she's like, sending it, it out where to her. Yeah, come on. Where, you, where you perform? Where you perform at? Where you perform? Where you perform? <laughs> where you perform? Yeah. Oh, Kimmel. I'm Kimmel. I've never seen the place. I've never seen the place. I've never seen the place. Never seen the place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, um, so she's just like sending it out and blast in these group chats. I'm like, mom, don't put me in group chats with people. I'm also like, I get so embarrassed, like still, because I'm just like. My dad would be like, yeah, like your mom just sent it to me. Or yeah. people, I just randomly like, oh, yeah, your mom sent me that video. I'm like, why? No, what you have to understand. <laughs> no, listen, listen, listen. Because you're on here with two fathers, too. Yeah. Our kids are our greatest accomplishments. Yeah. yeah. Whatever it is that you guys do, whatever small thing. Yeah. It's like it's it's walking again. Mm-hmm. Oh, my God, they said their first word. And, and when you become successful as an adult. Mm-hmm. Or as a teenager, and things are happening, like we take that as as our pride and joy, literally. And I know it can be embarrassing. It, it can. I, I get it. Everyone's embarrassed by their parents. I, I Even get Blue it. Ivy's embarrassed by Beyonce. Yeah, yeah. I mean, but it's like that's life. That's life. We be proud. We be proud. Yeah. My daughter be doing a little stuff. Oh, she did her little flip of gymnastics. Yeah, yeah baby. Look at this pain, baby. <laughs> Basquiat. Here we go. That's how it, for for parents who really love you and really care. Like that's that's yeah. how it goes, man. Whatever my son does, whatever my daughter does, is that is greater than any hit record, anything that I've, I've ever accomplished. Yeah. What our kids do, so appreciate the group chat. <laughs> appreciate the group chat. Appreciate the group chat. It's all right. It's all right. The group chat is all right. It's all right. So, we, but listen, yeah, family or not, family or not, talk to her. We're not letting you off the hook. Don't you do it. We got a segment of this show mm-hmm. that you cannot leave here without doing. Uh. Uh-uh. Piano man, give me some theme music. <laughs> what is this? Ah, <laughs> you gonna hear it? I ain't saying no names. Look, hey. I ain't saying no names. Hey. I ain't saying no names. I ain't saying no names. Where we was? Where we was? Who we with? Who we with? What we did? <laughs> what you Don't did? Say shit. <laughs> 
Hey. I ain't saying no niggas. I ain't saying no names. Yeah. Special segment of the show. Yeah. It's called I Ain't Saying No Names. No names. The story can be funny, funny. or fucked up or, fucked or funny up. and fucked up. Both. Mm-hmm. We would like it to be funny and fucked yeah. up. Yeah. But it's up to you. Totally. One rule in the game. There's only one rule in the game. One rule. You can't say no name. No name. Mm-hmm. You can give descriptions. You can do whatever. Yeah. Just you cannot say their name. Okay. So hmm. are you ready? No. Not yet? Okay. Take your time. All right. Take your time. Take your time. Take your time. We got editing. Jacob, yes. she needs an edit. Jacob's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Jacob's awesome. Um, but we're going to get it. Ruben, cut up the audio. I have so many <laughs> yeah. stories oh, no. in my life. I'm trying to figure come out. On, come on, come on. Get the people, get the people what they want. Get the people something. I, I have funny. Well, all they're they're messed up and they're also like funny. That's good. That's great. That's my life. Yeah. Um. Okay. I have a story. It's about Coachella when Beyonce performed. Okay. So say okay. no names. Okay. So Beyonce is not in the story. because no, she's she was just performing. Okay. Okay. okay so we're gonna put that out there. So right now, mm-hmm. we are going to Justine Skies. Mm-hmm. Grownish. I ain't saying no names. <laughs> <That's cool>. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so I'm at Coachella with my friends, and we're having the best time. It's the year of Beachella. Mm. And um, obviously, like, we're all just lit, having the best time. And then, like, all of a sudden, we realize, like, oh, shoot. Like, we have to, like, maybe miss a little bit of the end of this if we want to get out before, like, the rush, the the rush happens. Yeah. So we're just like, okay, like we've like our dreams have come true. Like maybe we'll come back next weekend. Like let's like, you know, let's just let's like let's let's leave. It's a big group of us. And um what's crazy is like coincidentally, like on on the show Insecure, like exactly what happened in this read. It's kinda like what happened to us as well too. So we're like leaving, we're trying we're just having the best time. We're all in great spirits. And like I think one of my friends like hops over like the gate to get back into like the artist compound which could what we had the passes and everything but we were just like we got to get out of here and it's the last show so we're just like oh no one's gonna be that crazy one of the security guards grabs her throws her down to the ground and then her boyfriend and all the other guys like they just start like god was it going crazy like they're getting this guy and then like people start filming it and we're like oh no so we start grabbing phones and we're like throwing them we're just like oh what are we gonna do and then it was just really funny. It's probably funny if you like knew the names, but I'm not saying no names. So, uh, <laughs> so y'all jump security. Um, no, the, we didn't jump the security. <laughs> but they probably didn't think that we were gonna do any like do anything right. back. But it was just so crazy and like the because when people started recording, we were just like. We were just like, no, you can't record this. This is crazy. Yeah, we're beating so, up like, the security. You can't record you this. Can't, you can't. You, when and you so, um, committing a crime. No, it wasn't a crime. <laughs> it wasn't a crime. <laughs> when a felony is involved. There was no crime. And then, um, yeah, I don't. I guess that wasn't that good of a story. It was great. No, no it wasn't. Yeah. My life is way more interesting than that. Listen, you want? You got another one? You got another one? What you want to do? It's on you. Um. Okay. Let's see. Ooh, this one's bad. No, 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 I can't do that one. That one's too crazy. It's, what that do you one's mean? So Let's go. Crazy. You ain't saying no names. You ain't saying no names. Okay, fine. Okay. I'll tell half of the story. Okay, so I was, this was like over COVID, um, and <laughs> this is really bad. Oh, this is so bad, actually. You guys are going to feel really bad for me. Or I'm not. You're going to think I'm an idiot. But, um, okay, so I was, um, it was COVID and I was, it was like the beginning of it. We didn't know it was happening. And I was like um, dating this person. And I'd like found out that he was like texting someone. So then I was like, you know what? And I was so crazy because I was with his brother earlier that day too. And I was like, I never want to be in this situation and blah, blah, blah. And then I went back to the house and there was just a computer screen that was just open. And I was like putting his keys down. I was like, that's crazy. It's just open on a text message. That's really insane. So I was like, I just, I think it was maybe Kelly Rowland that I saw like say an interview and she was like, just don't scroll up or something like that. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Maybe it wasn't her. I'm the wrong person. But I saw something and, and there was like a woman saying like, 
just never sc- if you see like someone's phone open just never scroll up and I was like nah, I'm gonna scroll up and so I <laughs> no, <laughs> scroll up. Up. and so I scrolled up and what do you know there's just like nudes and this and that I was oh, like shit. oh no Ooh. he immediately called his mom and I was like uh uh-uh, uh come Wait, get you me called his mama yes I come get me I gotta go and then she was like I'm so sorry like this is all my fault I raised him this way I was like that is a grown man like he whatever and then um so that and I called my other friend that lived in the same area and I was like come get me like I have to leave like blah 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 whatever I then like I bring the computer to the guy and I'm like this is you like this is what you're doing it's COVID you're trying to cheat on me during COVID <laughs> like that's crazy you're gonna go bring COVID back <laughs> are you insane <laughs> and then and then he's like why are you in my phone and I was just like that's what you have to say and I was like, he was like, well, if you're so unhappy, then leave. And I was like, I am leaving. But I just wanted you to give you the opportunity. And he was like, whatever. Anyway, so then something happened. And, I, and this was like at a time where like, because of COVID, like we were doing like lives for brands and like oh, doing yeah, like yeah. mini performances. Uh, mm-hmm. And so I had to do a performance for like Levi's or something. Mm-hmm. And I had to go live and the time was coming, but all of this was happening. And I was like, shoot, like, I'm going to have to do this performance here. Like, I have to set up and like. Oh, you can't leave. So I can't leave. (laughs) And so like, I'm like, this is the worst moment ever. So I'm sitting, I'm like, like, and he's like, just do the performance here. And I was like, don't talk to me. Like, don't (laughs) speak. Actually, just shut up forever. And so I'm just like, whatever. And then his brother and his mom come and like, they're helping me. And he's just like, I don't know what the hell he's doing they had to leave because they had to go do something or go home or whatever. And so I'm sitting there, I set up the phone and then he, like I press start and then he comes into where I'm doing the live, sits in front of me while I'm singing, doing the performance. And every time I finished a song, he would clap. (laughs) Oh yeah, oh it's a wow. He's sick. Oh yeah, wow. Ah! I'm not laughing. (laughs) I'm not laughing. (laughs) It was horrible. That is sick. And then he like, had to show you, and he I just your had number to look, and I'm on live, so I had to like pretend like nothing was happening, and he, it was just empty room, just him. And I'm like, you yeah. should rot in hell. Yeah. And then I left. I think he's kind of funny. I think it's very funny. <laughs> you think it's funny? <laughs> Listen. That that's what's wrong with you. Great. Some shit. Some shit is so bad. It's, it's so like, bad. No, it was you so, gotta laugh no, at it. Was it. So bad. That. But you know what was really funny? Okay. Because when my birthday oh, came around, I get back. Here we go. Here we go. Oh, shit. When my birthday came back. around, because at that point I was like, I was long gone. I was like, I left the whole state. I was like, goodbye. And then he reached out to all my friends, like trying to be like, I I need to make this up to her. Like I messed things up. Like reached out to my managers at the time, all of my best friends. He was like, I need to come to L.A. and surprise her. And they were like. Mm, no, like we don't think that's a good idea. Like send flowers. So, haha, jokes on him. Mm-hmm. So no get back. No get back. No, no goodbye. Back. You're trash. Oh, she found her camera too. <laughs> she found she her, found her, her camera. camera. She <laughs> know where the light at. She know where the light at. Back. No, but when I look back at these moments, I'm like, honestly, like you have to laugh. Like it's, no, it was traumatic in the too. in the moment, but it's like, and also I learned my lesson. But that's a mo- that's like a Don't scene in a up. movie. No, Don't scroll not up. Even... That wasn't the lesson. Was that, that was... <laughs> I, I thought that was a, no. It wasn't. All right, what was cool. the lesson? <laughs> I thought Don't scroll up was the lesson. Don't deal with people have like that. Place oh, to, have another place. Have another place to perform. Like what's the lesson? <laughs> also, I've never, I've have never, another venue. No, have another yeah, venue. Like, like, a just in case by. venue. <laughs> no, the lesson was if I ever am dating someone and I feel the need that I need to look through their shit. You probably shouldn't. I shouldn't be with them. Fair. That's fair. This. That's the lesson. That's fair. I live and by also that. find a closer venue. No I'm kidding. Really, I live by that. If I gotta look, check after you, run yeah, after you. Yeah. It ain't worth it. I don't have the time. Yeah. yeah. Well, that was. By great. the way, I've never told that story before. That was a great, so you guys, we, a great story. we thank you. Yeah. yeah. Here at the Army Money yeah. Podcast, that was that. That, yeah. that yeah. might be top yeah. two. Yeah. That might be top Who's two. That one? I ain't saying no. No, I'm saying it's oh. between you. <laughs> it's between you. It's you don't be- want to say who else. No, no, it's between, <laughs> it's between you and somebody else for top spot. I ain't saying no names. That was Great really recovery. Good. That was really good one. That was really, that was good. really good. Yeah. Thank you for coming and, and, and turning up Thank with the, with the old people. Me. Well, I'm old. He young. You know, I'm you're old. not old. old. You know, I like being old. They always ask, cool. ask if he my son. That's how you know. <laughs> I can see it. <laughs> 
But um, thank you. You always got a home at R&B Money. You know that. And yeah. um, we will continue to support you, um, uplift you, shine the light on you, whatever you need us to do. We are here. We are at your disposal. Continue to be great. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Continue to be grown-ish. <laughs> um, and keep the music coming. Thank you. I know yeah, your acting coming. bag is crazy. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? And you, you yeah, know, yeah. But she you, owns Collide. Own. She so owns run it. it. Up. So run it up. Run it up. You know what I mean? Them other songs, whatever one she owns. No, Dark Side. Go dark, dark, dark Side. The dark side. whole Dark Side. You stream it. You buy it. What Make TikToks to it. Make TikToks to it. <laughs> Come on, TikTok. Tell them. Come TikTok. on, TikTok. Tick, <laughs> tick, tick, Come on. Ticketing. Get out of there. All right. <laughs> My name is Tank. I'm Jay Valentine. And this is the RB Money Podcast, the authority on all things RB. And this has been the beautiful, the awesome, the talented, the yeah. lovely Justine Scott. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. R&B money!